Okay, so hi everyone, and welcome to my speech about privacy preserving web search. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so it's just a quick overview of what I'm going to talk about today. So first I'm going to introduce you to Quant, and uh, that maybe not all of you know. Then I'm going to talk about two, the two main subjects, so privacy, what does it mean for us and for our users, and also web search specificities. And then I'm going to dive a little deeper into our ranking pipeline and what does it mean uh, to improve relevance when you don't know anything about the users. <clears throat> and then I'm going to finish with a short outlook. Okay, um, so first um, about me, so I'm Lara Penetti. I've worked at Quant since 2020, and I started there as a data scientist specialized in natural language processing, and now I'm kind of a machine learning engineer slash project manager. Um, and I've worked there in the search team, uh, mainly on the index, so query processing and ranking evaluation of the whole pipeline. So what is Quant? Quant is a web search company um, developed in France um, and is focused now on the French market. Uh, we do respect the privacy of our users and some statistics that, uh, that I can give you is that we receive 2,200 million uh, monthly requests uh, which uh, represents roughly 6 million monthly users. <clears throat> um, yeah. In the search team, so we are a, a group of 50 people, um, and we are building our own search engine, so from crawling to, to indexing and evaluation. As I said before, we are uh, focused on the French market, so we do, uh, our crawler is uh, focused on searching for French URLs and we, we are focused on the relevance of our results on French queries. Um, but you can use Quant in Germany or in other countries, it's just that uh, we will redirect the, the results, uh, the Bing results. Um, yeah. And other statistics, we have 5 billion indexed web pages in our cluster. And um, <clears throat> we re I said that we receive 200 million um, queries monthly, but 70% of those queries are unique, so we haven't seen them before, and we won't see them afterwards. OK. so. First, I wanted to focus on privacy. What does it mean for us and for our users? So let me first introduce you to some buzzwords um, <laughs> about privacy. So of course, we follow the GDPR um, regulation. But on, on top of that, we, we do not um, show to users consent banners. So it means a lot of things. but. One thing is that we do not use tracking cookies. Uh, about our users, we only receive um, user queries. We log their clicks, if there is one. And we also have the hashed uh, user IP. It's just because we are bound by the law to, to do it. Uh, but it's hashed, so it's not possible to, to make a connection between the queries, the clicks, and the IP. Um, of course, there is no user session. Uh, so we do, do not record uh, history, and uh, because of that, we do not have um, filter bubbles. Uh, we don't create them, and um, except when we <laughs> run A/B tests, um, I mean we have uh, different results when we run A/B tests. Okay, so what's for users? So we do not track uh, their search history, as I said before. We do not monitor their, their behavior. We do not have their precise location. And we also do not um, have any information about demographic or socioeconomic information about our users, such as, I don't know, um, gender, uh, income level, um, age, 
etc. So it ensures that search results remain unbi unbiased, depending on, depending on those kinds of in information and free from potentially discriminatory personalization. Okay, um, what does it mean for us? It's, it means that um, there's a lot of queries that are really ambiguous and if you don't know anything about your users, you won't, uh, they can't expect us to, to, <laughs> to be relevant when, when they search for best restaurants or uh, Python, I mean, we don't know if they are a uh, fan of snakes or computational uh, scientists. So how does it work in practice? Um, so this is a, 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 an example of a query. So I queried quant on quant um, in Germany. Uh, and this is the answer. Um, so what, what do we record? We, we record the, the query, we record that the first thing the user did is to <clears throat> click on the first result, and then he get back to, to this um, page and clicks on the third one. What we record for that is that, that some user has uh, queried quant and clicked on the first one, and another user has queried quant and clicked on the third one. Okay. So now that I've introduced you to um, the privacy focus, I wanted to also introduce you to, to web search specificities, uh, because at Berlin Passwords, there is not that much um, um, people working on the web. So um, <clears throat> the web is vast and constantly expanding, so the web, our web crawler um, must handle the massive scale of the web. Uh, about the web pages, they are dynamic, dynamic and constantly changing in terms of content, uh, structure, and also availability. So uh, our web crawler needs to adapt to those changes and uh, revisit previously um, crawled pages to, to detect the updates um, <clears throat> and store them. And as you might know, a lot of web pages can, could be malicious or just have deceptive content. So our web crawler must um, detect this, um, this, this kind of content and uh, avoid them by, uh, by using uh, machine learning, for example, like spam detection techniques. Uh, so we have developed our own web crawler uh, at first, we used the nudged uh, web crawler, but we wanted our own to run 24-7. So, um, and the nudged uh, web crawler is, is batch crawler. So, so yeah, for now, we, we crawl 24-7, 3K URLs per second. But the goal for the end of September is uh, to, to crawl 10K URLs per second. Once we have crawled uh, our URLs, we, we do some feature extraction. So uh, we split the feature extraction into two parts, synchronous features, which means that um, uh, that's the feature extraction on only one document. So we extract content, title, URL, etc. But we also use machine learning to, to extract other kinds of information, such as uh, language or topic um, detection. And we also use uh, the, the information um, from the web crawler, so the web graph, which is created by the web crawler, to, to get some asynchronous features, uh, such as pop rate to scores, uh, page rank, or also anchor text. Anchor text is the text uh, describing a page A on a page B. Um, and then we index those documents and uh, those features. Um, so we, we're using um, Vespa, and um, as I mentioned before, we have um, indexed 5 billion documents in, in, uh, in our Vespa cluster. So we do some personalized, um, not personalized, but yeah, query processing. Um, <clears throat> but we do not uh, use vector search for now in production. Um, 
and we have a two-phase ranking. Both of them are uh, learned with machine learning. So the first one is a linear model because it has to be fast. And then we have a light GBM model. We, we tried to, to uh, model all other kinds of models like deep learning models, but this one is the one that works uh, best. So yeah, that's it. <clears throat> and now I wanted to, um, now that I've introduced you to privacy and web, I wanted to dive a little deeper into some challenges about um, how, we, uh, how we improve the relevance of our ranking without knowing anything about our users. So, as I mentioned before that, uh, our ranking is based on machine learning, so we have to use data sets. Uh, we do not use manually annotated data, first of all, because it's, it can be really expensive um, to produce, but also because uh, manually annotated data is uh, usually static and uh, it can capture the evolutionary nature of the web and also of the user behavior that changes uh, a lot through time. Uh, and the third reason is that um, we, have, we do not have that much data about the user, but we have uh, the only um, data set that we can uh, use is, can be seen as a cheap implicit relevant signal, which is the, the click information. So we use it as an implicit feedback, but it's even more implicit since we don't have a user session. Uh, <clears throat> so it, each uh, click information is isolated from the other ones. Uh, OK, so by using uh, uh, clicks, we know that uh, we introduce some biases, uh, such as the noisiness of a click, which means that uh, a click doesn't mean that, it's, uh, that the document is relevant, and the other way around, which means that uh, a click, um, if a document was not clicked, it doesn't mean that it was not relevant. And also other biases, such as position bias or uh, presentation bias. So um, users tend to, um, to click on the top-ranked um, document, <coughs> even if the lower ranked uh, are also relevant. So that's why we used a uh, click model. So uh, just a reminder of what we have. We have in our log logs um, the query, the displayed documents, and the rank at which the uh, click occurred. And the goal is to not use the clicks as raw data, but uh, to debias those clicks. Uh, and that's why we use the click model, which is a Bayesian model, um, and we, we use a specific one called cascade model. Um, so a, to the, the basically, a cas cascade model assumes that the user scans from top to bottom um, the results and chooses the re relevant one. And we used uh, the cascade model um, because it doesn't allow sessions with more than one click, which it's what... Um, we have, uh, and then we get the uh, probability of, of the attractiveness of a document given a query. So that's what we do to, <coughs> to, to improve our ranking uh, without knowing um, anything about our users. And now, just a short outlook. Um, so, sorry. <laughs> Um, yeah, we have to imagine new ways, new ways of under, understanding our users without knowing nothing about them. Uh, we have still a lot of difficulties and challenges ahead of us, such as um, query ambiguities that I've mentioned before. Um, and the next steps is that we want to open to other countries, uh, European countries first. Um, which will lead to other challenges like uh, new languages to handle, but also new user behaviors. Um, and also we want to use vector search in production and maybe also la large language models in production. And that's it. If you have any questions now or afterwards, uh, you can talk to me or to Laura.
Thank you so much, Lara. So we have time for a couple of questions. Does anybody? Hello. Uh, thanks for the presentation. It, it was very interesting. Um, so I have a question about um, like um, relevancy. So you mentioned that you don't collect any data and you don't know who's making the, mm -hmm. the request. Um, in this context, how do you make sure that the response that you give is relevant? Because if you don't know the person, you ha don't have any context around around the person that made the request, mm -hmm. how the results can be relevant for that particular person? They won't be. They won't be. I mean, okay. it's just going to be relevant for the query, not for the user. So yeah. I don't know if you search for a recipe for an apple pie. It's, we are just yeah. looking for apple pie recipes and not, I don't know, a certain domain that the user wants. Okay. So, so that's the, like the, the price to pay mm -hmm. in order that's to... That's it. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Any other questions? Probably removed from the focus of the presentation, but just <laughs> genuinely curious and really like the, the idea. But how does monetization look for you? The what? Monetization. Sorry. How does it look for quant? I, sorry, I didn't catch the word. Monetization. Oh, okay, sorry. Um, <laughs> <laughs> how do we make money? <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, we, we do make money uh, by advertising, such as Google or other search engines do. but. Uh, it's not um, personalized for a user, but only contextualized for, for a query. So if I'm looking for a chair, you, you're going to have an IKEA uh, <laughs> ad. That's it. 